Hi guys, welcome back to Between Us Foods. Today we have a very special panel of San Jose leaders and today we're pretty much going to be talking about being directors here at San Jose um, and exactly how we got to where we are. So Between Us Foods, let's talk about it. Hi guys. Hey, what's up? <laughs> uh, so thanks so much for coming in. Um, Definitely. It's been, it's, this is a podcast I have honestly been wanting to do since we first started this, mm -hmm. um, just to kind of bring some leaders together and just talk about like, you know, the San Jose community and just like where we are and how we are yeah. involved in it. Yeah, yeah. of course. Um, so kind of first and foremost, let's kind of introduce you guys and like um, just your name and who you direct for, um, et cetera, et cetera. So whoever wants to go first. Uh, yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, my name is Dylan Nguyen. Uh, I'm the director of Commonality. Uh, yeah. Uh, my name is Daniel. I, cur I currently direct, or I help direct, a syndicate based in San Jose. So. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, if you guys didn't know, my name is Kevin, and I am the director of Chocolate Factory and Gobstoppers. Nice. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like um, again, I've just I'm just super excited to actually really have you guys here because I've been wanting to do this for so long, mm -hmm. and I think first and foremost, I kind of want to just talk about like um, how exactly you guys got to where you are. Mm -hmm. You know, like um, we all have probably pretty unique stories and stuff. We'll try to keep it short because um, we do have a limited time, mm -hmm. but um, I definitely wanted to like kind of pick your brains a little bit about that because I'm curious especially at the end of today like how much we like have similar experiences yeah, and stuff. because a, a lot of times like being a director it does feel a little lonely sometimes yeah. Yeah. and so it's like you know we're, we're actually kind of our own little sub community interestingly mm -hmm. that we just mm -hmm. don't really get a lot of opportunities to talk about this stuff mm -hmm. so like yeah how did you guys get to where you are like whoever wants to go first oh man uh for me, as far as like directing, it's kind of funny. I feel like it kind of fell into my lap. Like I didn't mm -hmm. necessarily have a plan to be a director or want to be a director even when I first started dancing. Um, but it did a lot for me, I feel like, because when I first started, all I ever really said was like, I'm a dancer mm -hmm. or I want to be a dancer. But for a lot of people, it was like, well, what does that mean? And mm -hmm. I didn't know what that meant either. I was just like, I just want to dance. Um, so I taught a lot from a young age, I started teaching at like 16 years old. And I was teaching wow. like a lot of kid classes, um, which kind of, I feel like taught me the foundation for teaching and that kind of stuff. Um, and then I went to LA for a couple years and then I came back. And when I came back, uh, me and my friends were just kind of like dancing in garages, which is cool. Like, I think that's what Common Alley does, right? Yeah. Like you oh, guys dang. used to garage a lot. Yeah, we used to sesh all the time. Yeah, and oh, so crazy. we would just be dancing in the garage, like in the streets, literally. So <laughs> my friend Kevin, uh, Kevin Nguyen, came to me and was just like, hey, I want to start this thing. Uh, do you want to be a part of it? And that was all that was really asked of me was, do you want to be a part of it? Not even like, do you want to direct? Like, do you want to help me do this? It was just like, mm -hmm. do you want to be a part of this thing I'm going to do? And I was like, yeah, sure, let's do it. And literally we made Syndicate and ended up just kind of being the director by like... <laughs> by default. Yeah, by default <laughs> kind of, yeah. And um, so it was really cool. It was really cool. Like, I'm glad it happened. Again, it helped me a lot because I feel like it gave me a better direction of like mm. me saying not now I don't say like I want to be a dancer but like I want to be a director and like a creative director right. and not just for dance but like maybe like movies or TV shows or mm -hmm. whatever mm -hmm. so I think it was like a blessing in disguise that it fell into my lap because it again it helped me really kind of define exactly what I wanted to do with dance and give me like a clear path for nice. sure and yeah. when did that start up that was like 20 Oh man, 16, it's been like, somewhere? yeah, it's been like five years, like 2015, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. 2015. Dang, and where you guys are now, like that's... It's that's, crazy. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I don't know, man. It like, still feels new. It still feels very new. Like mm -hmm. five years goes by so fast and I think... Seems like just last year, honestly. Yeah, it mm -hmm. feels like it was, It just kind of happened, but it's been a really fun ride the whole time, so... Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. Uh, um, go ahead, Dylan. Honestly, kind of the same way. Mm. Uh, I actually auditioned for Commonalities first auditions mm. just to be on the team. Oh, wow. Um, me and Matt, we were on VIP together, and I was actually the captain for about like a year and a half or two years. So I was like, so, like, sort of kind of directing, you know, mm. just assisting. But um, uh, I told them that after being like a leader for a few years, I just kind of wanted to dance. So I auditioned, and then, um, you know, every, I was was having meetings in their house because I was always over there with my girlfriend and all the directors were living in the same spot and I was just helping them out with meetings. So I was like, oh, maybe you guys should try this on them because they would, they were like, oh, we don't know what to do. Mm -hmm. Next thing they're like, why don't you guys just, why don't you just 
direct. <laughs> why don't you just yeah? Why don't help you just us? do it? I was like, oh Damn. shoot, <laughs> yeah. Because uh, me and Matt, we always talked about starting a new team. Because uh, after VIP closed, we were kind of like in this limbo. We're like, mm. oh man, what do we do? Do we join another exactly. team? Exactly. Yeah. But um, Matthew was the one that really like pushed me. He's my co-director. Mm -hmm. um, he was like, let's just start a team. I was like, uh, I don't know if we're ready. He was like, we don't have to be. Let's just just start Ooh, it. We that. don't we don't have to like. There's nothing to lose. So. Yeah. Um, our first year, we decided not to compete, just strictly train our team and accept whoever was down to be a part of commonality. And yeah, we're still in the garage. Mm -hmm. um, it's a little bit of a challenge. It gets a little cold, a little <laughs> yeah, wet. No, sure. oh my gosh, but yeah. uh, you know, I love my team so much. They're just they're full of like really hungry individuals. But um, mm -hmm. yeah, commonality kind of just also fell on my lap too. And I was just like, all right, I guess I gotta take charge and there's no one to really like look up to when it comes right. to like help so you're like all right you just got to all come from within mm -hmm. so um yeah it's three years now officially i believe 2017 i think nice. yes yeah. so it's uh time's flying by really fast for yeah. us also yeah. but um you know it's nice because after vip close we're like dang like teams are starting to like it felt like it was shrinking in san jose hmm. but we wanted to keep on expanding it because like san jose is full of super talented I people know. yeah and we just really wanted to highlight that so it'd be nice to we could if we could just contribute a little bit to san mm -hmm. jose so that's the goal right now absolutely yeah. gotcha i mean you know one thing i always wanted to ask i guess was i know that matt had asked i guess myself and some other people to come and i guess teach work those free workshops mm -hmm. on top of the garage was that kind of like I guess the prelude to it a little bit, or was what's the connection between that? Like, that one club started because we were always running a hip hop club, mm -hmm. uh, San Jose uh, SJSU Hip Hop Club, mm -hmm. and that's where we actually all met. Everyone that we live with right now or hang out with, we all met through hip hop club. Wow, wow. And, that's uh, cool. There was one time we were like, oh, let's just start an intensive because we found out um, the school can uh, give you funds if you're an official club. Mm. So they'll give you a certain amount of money for you to spend. We're like, right. hey, let's just start an intensive and we'll make it free because we have money to pay uh, instructors. Cool. So we did it for the past three, four years, something like that. And we have we've had multiple like bi biannual semesters of just free intensives. And then um, it kind of just started as we wanted to give back to the community because like you know classes are so expensive nowadays mm -hmm. and then like um sometimes like classes can run up to like 20 25 dollars right. sometimes <laughs> no it's okay <laughs> but like we know it, com it comes with the market you know yeah. it comes with living in the bay area you know we can't know. you can't compete with la like la it's so much cheaper down there but it's because of cost of living yeah mm -hmm. but um with the intensive we're like this is a perfect opportunity for us to use the funds and then give back to whoever wanted to take free class so we were always providing at least one free month of just free classes and we we had to start with friends first right hey if you don't mind if you want to do it like for free or mm -hmm. just like just mm -hmm. for fun and yeah. then slowly start paying people and then we'll get like one big choreographer in every right. intensive but yeah it was just the main premise was definitely to give back to san jose that's cool mm -hmm. yeah yeah definitely i mean it's definitely one of our missions obviously here at the studio and yeah stuff. so like um which by the way you guys can take their classes here at the studio. <laughs> hey, shameless yeah. plug uh, when do you guys teach go ahead uh, i teach every other i believe it's side b tuesdays 9 30 p.m yes. mm -hmm. yeah and i teach side a every saturday at 12 15. Yeah, so mm -hmm. come and take our classes, yeah, guys. We'll be here. They're awesome. Yes, <laughs> they both yes. subbed this week, so thank you for yeah. that. <laughs> yeah, gotcha. um, uh, so I guess my turn with uh, how I came up. I did talk about it a little bit mm -hmm. in previous podcasts, um, but to sum it up, um, me and Carly actually, after our high school group kind of disbanded, we were like okay, kind of similar to Dylan. I mean, like we were just like, okay, what's next? How do we keep dancing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's 2009. What do we do? <laughs> you right. know, like, and so um, I think. It was funny because Gino actually started a team and he put out a flyer, just like a really random flyer, and it just said dance team auditions. Mm. There's no other details. It was wow. just a location. Nice. And, like, and me and Carly were like, you want to go? Like, you want to try this? And we're, just, we're like, okay, yeah, sure. I'll go if you go. And uh -huh. was, we were always like that for like a couple of years. Yeah. Um, and so we made it and it was cool. And so we just tried it out and, you know, a lot of ups and downs, like in the beginning, especially in the start of a team, yeah. you know, you're still trying to figure it out mm -hmm. and stuff. But me and Carly were there for like, a lot of the beginning of it yeah. and I think because I stuck through it like um, Gino kind of started to gain a little bit more trust in me and mm -hmm. allowed me to choreograph a specific sets actually have like a voice in terms of casting and just overall artistic direction yeah. mm -hmm. and stuff and then um, I did take a break for a couple of years um, just to kind of focus on finishing school and just everything else mm -hmm. um, and then eventually he 
like he texted me after a year and a half of not being on the team saying like hey do you or not even texted me i think he just came up to me he's like hey do you want to like direct i was like what <laughs> nice. like i don't even know these people like, what, the anymore? Like, what's we'll happening real quick i know so basically what happened was like yeah like we co-directed for um a couple like a year a year and a half mm -hmm. and stuff um just so that i can kind of get introduced to the new generation Definitely. um but then what was kind of interesting was because i came back a lot of the old generation came back mm, and so it was exciting. a couple of years of us just kind of recalibrating like what the team is and stuff and then once gino kind of um retired to focus on the studio first he was kind of one of the first people to focus on it mm. um basically i was left in charge and that's where i felt like the training wheels are off and it was like all right. Oh, right and yeah. i still feel like you know i'm learning every single day like sure. just always. like what's happening yes. always, <laughs> with always. my position and stuff so it's like yeah. it's crazy but um it's been i know it's actually i don't know if you guys know it um but it's it is my final year mm -hmm. of being a director so it's like now i'm in this mode of like okay what's next for myself for uh, my team for yeah. everything so always you know the future yeah, yeah. yeah i know so i mean that's one of our jobs right yeah. just always think what's next for our teams so, right always, yeah. you know so now kind of going into um just kind of our weekly lives i feel like um even our teams even though they see us the, obviously the most often they there's probably a lot that they don't see mm -hmm. um in terms of just what our weekly lives our monthly lives are for yeah. the team yeah. and stuff so like um i guess i'm gonna leave this pretty open-ended because mm -hmm. um you know uh you can answer it however you want yeah um but what is the life what is a day in the life like as being a dance director like what is a week look like what does a month look like to you guys um in general what's something that goes through your mind your schedule etc cetera, etc cetera. so um for me and matt we're just always communicating uh, i don't know what app you guys use we used to use group me yeah but then we decided to use band band mm. is like a super nice app which like we can upload everything calendars events plan things and um we're literally messaging every like each other every day like okay what's next mm -hmm. one about the schedule two about the artistic side mm -hmm. three about uh events admin work you know it's yeah. just what are we applying to are we gonna get in um right what should we do to bring like our team together and whatnot and it's just it's a lot of planning on the outside it's a lot of like here and there text messages like yeah oh i just got an idea i'm gonna I'm a text matt right now but like, hey by the way i just thought of this yeah. while i was at work um i feel like it's just you're always thinking about it but mm -hmm. it doesn't feel like a job because if you truly like love it it's just like this is what you're about yeah. you know what i mean so yeah. it's just like he will text me here and there's like hey i got an idea for a shirt i'm like okay i got an idea for a uh, couple of training things that we can do so it's just i feel like it's literally a daily thing it might not be 24 7 but definitely like at least once an hour like i'll be mm -hmm. thinking about the team and like what we can do to like improve and help them out yeah yeah i can cannot further emphasize that it never leaves your brain no <laughs> like, not oh at my all. god yeah it's like, every day every second of every day i'm thinking about something mm -hmm. that caters to the team um for me like luckily we have a lot of people who help us like mm -hmm. uh so you have me and kevin who are the directors and then you have uh we have a whole board of creative directors after that mm -hmm. and then we also have just a bunch of like smaller teams who will like run our social media or like um talk about different like bondings that we can do so mm -hmm. we only kind of recently did that in the past couple of years because before uh, the board kind of did everything, everything mm -hmm. creative, <laughs> everything. We tried to plan everything and it just got so, it got to be a lot. Sorry. And with my team, we have 60 plus dancers. There's a lot of us. So there's a lot to think about. Um, so again, we're really lucky to like have a really good group of people who are always working hard to like make sure our social media looks good and uh, kind of leave the creative stuff to the board so we don't have to think too much about everything we kind of me and kevin will oversee everything it kind of will always move past us for us to give it like the okay mm -hmm. um but luckily again it's 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 good that we get to kind of put all of our focus into the creative and like you said just a ton of group chats my yeah. phone is blown up <laughs> yeah, like with so group many chats. group chats yeah. of just with different people um yeah just putting some ideas together and just making sure that we kind of have everything you know, I think being prepared is super important with mm -hmm. whatever you do, obviously. Yeah. But with the team, you got to be 10 steps ahead. 
so that you're not falling behind i feel like right yeah do you guys use like slack or facebook messenger Dude, or what we do you tried use? Uh, well we use group me because mm-hmm. we okay. just think it's the simplest uh we've tried everything <laughs> <laughs> for the past couple of years we've literally hopped between like band like you said we did that for a little bit it was too complicated for us we did slack for a <laughs> oh little God. bit it was too complicated for us oh. um, and then again just group me i think is the best for us because um it's funny we have we have like a bulletin which is like usually just the board will post in there like important announcements and stuff mm-hmm. and then we have like a spam chat where we just, we're chat. just yeah where we just do yeah. stupid left stuff and, right. and yeah we just post stuff <laughs> like that in there um but yeah i think group me is is the easiest for us because we just send stuff and just like it and just like whatever it's yeah. very simple yeah definitely got it um so i mean i think i we mainly use all, yeah, we kind of use multiple channels mm-hmm. and stuff. Like, I think we use Slack for like all the back end stuff. Yeah. Um, and then we do group me for all the random stuff. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At first, Facebook that. was our random stuff too, but then I think it got flooded with like, I announced for you guys to bring your costumes, but no one saw it mm-hmm. or whatever. It takes so, like 10 side tangents to lose the notification. Yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Like, so we, we yeah. just we <laughs> stuck to Facebook to just actually post like, you know, whenever we record our set runs and stuff like mm. that or just general announcements mm-hmm. yeah. overall. So yeah, but I agree like with you, Daniel, and like that, it just got to a lot. And so the way that, I guess the shop or chocolate factory works is like, yeah, we, it did start off with just me mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, by yeah. itself. And I mean, luckily for you guys, you actually have like a partner kind of in crime, a specific partner in crime. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Whereas I'm like, okay, I have to be the brainchild so of all these yeah. things. So I'm like, mm-hmm. oh gosh. So, but I do have a team and it's slowly started to expand. I have like, you know, my artistic team after yeah. myself. Mm-hmm. And then I have um, an events team that does our like, um, our like bonding stuff yeah um and then we have so a social media team um and that one is still like i guess finding its footing but now i think they're they're finding a system and it's it's starting to work yeah <laughs> yeah so we, so we literally just started that system where like me and matt were almost taking care of everything mm-hmm. and we hired one person that was like oh i'm always on social media i can take care of all your social media stuff and now she's just taken off Shout out to Celine, she's amazing nice um but yeah we're like slowly growing our little pockets of like okay we have one person in marketing we need one more person in like events so <laughs> yeah. it's like it's growing but definitely felt it when me and matt were just doing everything we're like oh now we have to think about the set but we also have to think about retreat yeah how, retreat. Are, we, how are we gonna fund oh, this man. yeah oh no we have this training going in like oh man spreading that out is definitely important i think it kind of clears yeah. up the yeah. cloudiness in your head sometimes definitely oh man like on kind of a little bit on the topic of money and retreat when you said retreat i was like oh my gosh <laughs> yes like, flashbacks just i've so always wanted horrendous. to go to the cabin well first of all if your team is like 30 what as our range is like 30 to 60 mm-hmm. yeah. or whatever it's like jesus like what kind of you need to get two cabins yeah like, it's a lot or yeah. like lie and say yeah we only have 15 people coming <laughs> right. yeah. um, 16 but, air and just squeeze everybody just, yeah. wherever they can it's fit. real cozy real quick uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Know, it's been a while since we've done a retreat but like it, i think it's the expense thing like it's a lot, really hard i mean we all like rent from studios or like well luckily you guys have this the school's funding and stuff yeah um but yeah, like we probably rent from the studios and yeah. stuff. So like that's a, its own expense on top of getting mm-hmm. the costume, on top of reg fees. It's yep. like, it's hard to ask your team of money, but like, it's For like, sure. I think it's just kind of like a fact of life a little mm-hmm. bit. So yeah, I think that's just kind of one of the hard parts for me. Yeah, and it is also hard because most of our dancers are full-time students. Mm-hmm. They're working a lot just to pay rent and just to like, do normal stuff so paycheck by paycheck. yeah so we have to do like you said like a lot of fundraisers sometimes mm-hmm. um or like we've done we've only done it once but we've done like the whole like gofundme thing when we wanted oh, to go oh to, like, yeah yeah we wanted to I go to socal that. so we were Provide, just like right? yeah. yeah so we were tight. like oh like you it's really your goal for that you did right yeah yeah awesome. luckily like it, like we got a lot of support from it and and that was really good but can't do that all the time we can't well, do yeah. every year yeah. like hey give us more money <laughs> we gotta figure it the out the second time around like mm. yeah yeah i gave you some last time so yeah i know it gets expensive for sure yeah. uh, for when sure. we did retreat i think the one thing was also calculated for food oh yeah and how much people eat oh my god yeah. Yeah. and uh if you're doing any extracurriculars people tend to get more hungry you know yeah. so it's just mm-hmm. like dang like people were like oh i think we can set aside like 300 for food oh. that goes away uh, in the first day oh, we're no. like okay yeah three all right let's go to, <laughs> let's go to walmart or something you know yeah. and then um me and Matt right now, since we're such a young team, we're paying for a lot of things up front mm. and then we're asking for money back. We don't charge our mm. dancers any dues because uh, it wow. would be fair 
We're, yeah. we're in a parking yeah. garage, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I would not want yeah. to pay $30 to dance in a garage. So mm-hmm. right now we're free. But uh, right now, uh, a lot of the money is just being fronted by us and they pay us back slowly. Hmm. But um, that also does a damage to our pockets. Right. So we're like, we're kind of figuring out a new system right now. Yeah. But um, yeah, I, I couldn't imagine having 60 plus. Like, yeah, um, right now with 30, we're like, oof, it's a lot of people. I know. Yeah, it's crazy. But I'm glad that I think but like all three of our teams are kind of at a at a pretty high point in terms of just people being in them and just being involved. Yeah. yeah. I, I just love that, like that we um, basically play a part in that a mm-hmm. little bit, you know? Um, yeah. But one thing I wanted to definitely kind of talk about today was a little bit of your creative process. Um, I mean, we can kind of, I mean, I'm sure it takes like months, weeks or whatever, Mm -hmm. maybe a day, who knows. Mm -hmm. But um, I just wanted to kind of like delve a little bit into that um, because I I just think it's interesting, um, especially us as artists, just kind of see like, kind of pick your brain about that as well. Sure, yeah. Um, Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah. (laughs) Because for us, like, I think a lot of it basically stems from myself. Like, I'm, again, kind of being by myself. Um, I have a lot of time to think. Um, Like, there was one time I was just at Wingstop, and I was like, oh, Wings. Okay, let's do an airport set. It was like, all right. Sometimes it just happens, you know? It's literally the smallest things. Like, you would, uh, I'll be getting my hair cut, and be like, oh, we should do a barbershop set. Uh, (laughs) Just like, just like hair choreo. I don't know, something like crazy. It would take like little, like, little plant, and you'd be like, Oh, like greenhouse. Could, yeah, you know yeah. what I mean. Like, Green day. It, it literally, I feel like Green the day. ideas come at the most random times. Yeah, mm-hmm. like not when you're trying. I think that's the best part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, I mean, as far as creative process, for us, uh, we're really, really big on like uh, revamp, revise. So, most of the time. Obviously, you go through the creative process. We'll get together. We'll go get some pizza. We'll talk about our our ideas. Do we have any song ideas? Any set ideas? Any themes? Mm-hmm. All that stuff. Um, and we figure that out first and foremost. And then um, we usually kind of again spread that out amongst each other because again we have like a a creative board of five people, and that usually means five pieces. So we're all different, and we all kind of like put that into the set. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just kind of go through. And we'll try to make like a first draft. So we'll put these pieces, we'll do this blocking, and we'll get technically done. Mm -hmm. And then we'll go back and we'll change this and we'll make this better and make this bigger. And oh, I kind of want to do this. So literally, I think usually from creation to stage, we have about four drafts from start to finish yeah, that and that right. first right. draft yeah <laughs> and that first draft looks nothing like the last draft yeah. you know oh, what i mean yeah. i think it's important for us just to get the ideas out and for us to kind of like take a step back and then and and look at it and be like okay like now i see why this works or this doesn't mm-hmm. and then again you just go back and we just like sometimes they're really big changes we've mm-hmm. we changed whole songs yep. and whole wow. pieces before like just because we were like you know what this just isn't working um and sometimes they're small we've had some uh some pieces not me i honestly change so much all the time but uh (laughs) like kevin uh my other director will sometimes he just put something there's one piece it was like a kendrick lamar piece uh he put that in from having to take out another piece that he didn't like he was like i changed my mind and we trusted him to get it done because i think we only had a couple weeks before competition and he came in and i think the first day he said it, he barely made any changes after that. He was oh. like, I have this idea. It's going to go like this, bam, bam, bam. And it was just kind of done. Mm. And then that was one of the only times that it's been that way, where it was just kind of like easy, quick, and mm-hmm. it was done. But usually we go through a lot of drafts and just a lot of changes, just revising and making sure that everything looks really, really good by the mm-hmm. time we hit stage. And sometimes those changes will even happen like, show day yeah sometimes oh, it's like yes. one it, it can just be one thing it can just be one thing like obviously we're not gonna change a whole piece yeah but like it can one be one detail. small thing where you're like oh instead of doing a fist do a hand or like whatever something like that mm-hmm. which can be stressful it is yeah. but it's always we're always looking for how can we make it better every single time Feel yeah because at the end of the day your job isn't done until you perform not like, at all yeah, <laughs> yeah. exactly yeah. Yeah. Sorry, doesn't, even on the side like you're just hyping your team up like you're okay yep. let's go like and then once you're done you're done yeah. yep um i feel like the hardest part is just making sure the set is done mm-hmm. and, like making that decision of like oh should we go here go here but like what you said just get it done yeah and then you can always go back mm-hmm. yeah because for us it's uh we always want to make sure it's all about momentum of the set and how we deliver moments every single piece like right there should be always a moment 
in the piece where people are drawn back in because it takes one, I guess, you low energy piece for people to just tune out. Accurate. You know, and for us, uh, I always tell them that like as commonality, we're new. We don't have a name to ourselves, so we only have about ten seconds to really captivate the audience. Mm-hmm. And I tell them that like that's our window. You know, we can you can do a lot in ten seconds, and then yeah. you can make or break your set. So if you're always achieving those ten seconds at a time, and there's a moment that you're catching people in, then they'll it'll be a more memorable set. So even if it's not like a place worthy set, as long as people remember what we did, that's mostly mm-hmm. our goal. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, for me, part of that, like, 10 seconds is literally what the mix sounds like, Mm -hmm. which is, like, working with, I don't know who you guys, who does your guys' mixes and stuff, but working with my mixer, it's, like, I go through, like, 10 different drafts of that because that in itself, like, you can have the sickest choreo, but if your mix is weird, like, like, it's over, you know? People are going to be like, what is this song? For sure. So, it's... A lot of teams have been hiring a lot of people to mix their stuff lately, and it's Mm -hmm. been super effective. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know. Once I found my mixer, I was like, "Oh, okay, cool." No more, yeah. no more hard cuts. So much easier. Yeah. yeah. No more, no more like Garage Band. No more explosions. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know? Explosions. Yeah. Or DJ scratches no. or whatever. So yeah. I don't know, but yeah. So pretty much um, right now, we're actually gonna go into um, a question from our audience. We asked them on not Twitter. What, what do we ask them on Instagram? Hey. It's a story. Um, just ask us any questions that they have. And so I have a question from. Sam Fuzold, um, oh. and his question is, when did you know you were ready to be a leader? Oh. Oh, that's, that's a good question. I know. Because uh, oh. yeah. it's like in life or like for yeah. this. <laughs> you can answer it however you want. Um, I kind of can answer that, I guess, yeah. first to give you guys some yeah. time to think. Sure. Um, I feel like it's interesting because I feel like as a person, I'm pretty naturally awkward. <laughs> like, as a, you know, I'm so like, I don't know how to like, you know, talk to people yeah. sometimes. Uh-huh. But like, okay. um, I think since I was in middle school and high school, like I was always involved with leadership and stuff. And there was a lot of times where I was, I guess, annoyed of how certain other leaders were leading things. And I was like, mm-hmm. screw it. I'm going to take that. over and just do it the way I want to do it because I know it's going to work. Yeah. And so that was like always a mentality I had and stuff. So when I got the opportunity to, I guess, direct from Gino, I was like, you know what? Like, yeah, I mean, rinse and repeat. Yeah. <laughs> you know? It's like, just a repeat. new environment. Yeah. I mean, obviously, like, didn't fully know what I was getting myself into at the time. But, you know, like, I feel like you don't know when you're ready there's not right. like a not like a diploma you get no <laughs> it's like no, i'm yeah. a leader now yeah but um what about you guys uh i feel like like you said kind of like in middle school and stuff i remember being pretty like i guess i was kind of a control freak <laughs> like I, like you said that <laughs> I if i that. wanted something done i was like all right i'm gonna do it this way and just get it done um and like i said i started teaching classes at a young age at like 16 years old mm-hmm. and i was given that opportunity uh, by like my mentor Sammy Ramirez and he like he owned his own studio at that point in Hollister where I grew up and he started letting me teach class mm-hmm. um, he started taking me places to like introduce me to other people um, through just meeting people I was just kind of given a lot of really good opportunities and people uh, just trusted me which I was very grateful for mm-hmm. um, and I think because I kind of started teaching at a really young age you obviously have to lead the room you have to command the room and you have to make sure that you're running your mm-hmm. class a certain way and definitely. and i think that those definitely instilled a lot of values for me mm-hmm. um and then just like kind of learning from my other directors that i was on teams before mm-hmm. and kind of taking the stuff that they did that i was like okay i really like that and kind of instilling that into my classes and stuff um and like you said you don't really know you're that you're like a good leader or you become a leader or you're ready to become a leader like again with syndicate kind of just falling in my lap again i wasn't prepared for that i wasn't trying to lead it was just like there and then all of a sudden here i am and i'm directing and it's like okay, cool. <laughs> like i guess i'm ready now like and again like I, I, i'm just very grateful that that people do trust me and i think that it's important to also like give that back to to your students as you want to trust them too and Definitely and instill that. that in them too so that you know, if they want to be a leader one day, somebody trusted them. Mm-hmm. And then they could take that and, and take the next step necessary to lead in whatever mm-hmm. area they want. But I guess I've I guess I've kind of always felt like naturally like a leader. But yeah. it just kind of it keeps going. You don't. it's not like, OK, cool, I'm a leader. 
Like I'm still learning, like you said, every single time, mm-hmm. every practice, I'm still learning how to be a better leader and just how to be better in general. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm, it's almost like other people know that you're gonna be a leader before you are. Right. Or before you know. Yeah, exactly. like, for sure. Crazy. Like yeah. people see it in you until you, before you see it in yourself. So yeah. it's like, but that's a cool discovery to make yeah. <laughs> later on in life, you know? Um, <clears throat> yeah, for me, I felt the same way in school. Like when teachers didn't teach a certain way or like, you know, I wasn't getting the best out of it. I kind of want to be like, man, like, I feel like I could do better if I grow up, you know? Mm-hmm. Just like, I had one professor tell me like, you know, teach how you want to be taught and lead how you want to be led. Nice. And yeah. I've, that's something that I kind of go by. You know, I want to I want to be a leader that is firm in their decision, but also very empathic in people's feelings mm-hmm. and whatnot. And then um, also very understanding. But, you know, it's like a fine line when it comes to a leader. Um, I was I definitely was not ready for CM, but Matt was the one that kind of pushed me off the edge. He's like, we're just going to do it. And whether you want to do it or not, we're mm-hmm. just going to do it. I was mm-hmm. like, all right. Um, the first few semesters with CM, it's just like, dang, like, what do I talk about? These people don't even know who I am. But um, it's just, I feel like the m- number one thing was just making sure they're motivated and that um, their voices are heard and their their feelings are wanted. And um, yeah, you, I feel like you will never really know if you're truly ready to be a leader until you're actually put in that scenario. Mm-hmm. But um, definitely was scary. I don't think I was ever like telling myself, yeah, I think I'm ready to direct my own hip hop team and uh you know do something to the to the uh, world out there but yeah it's kind of a little scary thought but yeah. you know never really ready for it until you're just there yeah um, i think the most important thing in terms of like if you do want to be a leader is that you are a really good student uh, because mm-hmm. you have to if you're going to lead or you're going to set an example or if you're going to teach something the correct way you got to go learn that thing the correct way Mm -hmm. and you got to fill your cup before you can fill others so i think part of being a good leader is actually also being a really good student right because if you're not if you're not uh gaining more to give back then you're just what are you really selling you know what i mean like so i think step one if anybody is interested in being a leader or wants to become one or feels like, how do I get ready for that, is be a good student first. Definitely. And then it'll come in time. Agreed. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. So that wrap, about wraps it up for the first half of this podcast. Nice. Um, so basically, um, we're going to be actually be back next week with the same um, group, and we're going to talk a little bit more about our directors. But that about wraps it up for today. So between us, booze, we'll see you guys next time. Later.